Hi, I'm Libby Ambu. I'm Meredith Barbie, and we're from the Craig Lab at Duke University. We have been working with a molecule called spiropyran, which is colorless. When we incorporate this molecule into a polydimethyl siloxane elastomer and stretch it, mechanical force from my hands to this material to the spiropyran molecules causes them to open to this longer blue-colored marocyanine molecule. Here, we explain how we used MATLAB with Arduino to autonomously control this mechanochemical reaction. After we synthesized the spiropyran, this is what it looks like. We incorporated this molecule into PDMS films using the Silgard 184 silicon elastomer kit. This mixture is left to dry in the oven until all of the solvent has been evaporated and we're left with this nice, smooth film. The hardware they were using include an Arduino Uno board, an RGB sensor, and a stepper motor. We're also using this device to slowly stretch our film. To connect it to the stepper motor, we have 3D printed out the gears along with several other parts in our setup that hold the hardware pieces in place. The RGB sensor is placed behind the polymer film to monitor any color change within the film. In order to provide enough light that reaches the sensor, a white LED light has been placed in front of the film. So here's our whole setup, and now let's look at the code. I am John Deng. This is an explanation for the Arduino portion of the code. For the beginning of the Arduino code, we utilize lines 1 to 11 to define pens, variables, and include various Arduino and Adafruit libraries that we will be using. Next part of the code, we set up the co serial communications with the Arduino board. We define the pens as output and we set the value of rotations per minute for the motor here. From here to the end of the code will be the main function of the Arduino. There are three key components in the main function loop. The first one is called R. This is used to tell the color sensor to detect a color when MATLAB says the value R. The next key component is called F. When the MATLAB value equals F, we tell the motor to move forward. The last key component is called B. When the MATLAB value equals B, we tell the motor to move backwards. This is an explanation for the MATLAB portion of the code. This first part of the MATLAB code is C clear all previous code from the Arduino and define global variables that would be used in the code. This part of the MATLAB is used to establish a serial communication between the computer and Arduino. Line 19 starts the main function of the code with a while loop. While we want the color sensor to detect a color and if it is not the color we want, the motor moves forward by one step until the desired color is detected. This will cause the motor to start stretching a film since the film is initially colorless. This part from line 20 to 25 tells the Arduino to detect the color clear, red, green, and blue respectively. Lines 27 to 35 is used to display the color that the color sensor detects on the computer screen. This part of the code is used to calculate the RGB values in the ratio of red to blue and green to blue. By taking the ratio of the other colors to blue, we can cut out the background light and obtain a better signal to noise. This allows us to clearly measure what is changing when we stretch the film. This part of the code is to store the RGB and RGB ratio in a matrix. This is the last part of the while loop. The if statement tells Arduino to end the while loop if the desired color is detected. The else statement tells Arduino to turn the motor if the desired color is not detected. When the film turns blue, the loop is exited. If the film is still colorless, the motor will turn again and repeat until it has stretched enough to turn blue. And these lines tell Arduino to move the motor backwards by a total number of steps it moved forward during the entire program. This relaxes the film back to the same position that it started in. This part tells the code to wait for for the film to turn back to colorless. While a certain condition is not met, the code pauses for a second and detects the color again. Now, we have to determine how the values of R, G, and B change when the film turns blue. To do this, we stretch the film while monitoring the ratio U, which is red divided by blue, and V, which is green divided by blue. As you can see from this plot, 
When the film changes color, U, shown by the blue line, decreases while V, shown by the red line, begins to increase. Shortly after the film turns blue, U becomes lower than V, so we have chosen the condition for extending the film as U is greater than V and the condition to relax the film as U is less than V. The film can be repeatedly stretched until it turns blue and then returned to its initial length autonomously. The future direction of this design is to use other energy sources such as heat or light to induce color changing reactions and not just using force. Thanks for watching our film.